is no doubt that the sailing waters of the Costa Smeralda are some of the best in the world. They draw the finest yachts and the top crews. The scenic races along the coast and through the islands is just fantastic and hard to beat anywhere in the world. The most beautiful place to sail here. Beautiful boats, beautiful beaches. It's pretty hard not to love. I think it's absolutely great. It's just a really uh, yeah, good vibe here. Oh, this is a I think one of the most fantastic places in the world to do some coastal races. The water's beautiful to sail in, but it's all got a lot of hidden dangers in terms of the rocks. And this is what makes sailing here so challenging. The fantastic jagged rock formations which make the landscape so impressive also extend below the waterline, creating a maze of hidden undersea obstacles capable of wreaking untold damage should unsuspecting yachts fail to navigate around them. Sailing the archipelago, if you look at the core structures that we use, it's just as beautiful as it gets. But there is one person on board who isn't so thrilled, and that's the navigator. The reason's obvious. Not soft sand here, it's hard rocks. Uh, these boats are getting bigger at the Maxi Worlds, they're getting deeper. So it's always a concern for a navigator. We found that most of the course selections that we offer work for even the deep draft boats. Even so, to the uninitiated, racing here poses a nerve-wracking challenge. Jim Clark's Comanche, the new 100-foot ocean racer from the USA, is making her first appearance here at the Maxi Yacht Rolex Cup. You couldn't find a better or more experienced skipper than Ken Reed. And yet even he is mindful of sailing here. Keep coming, more pressure coming. This area is notorious, obviously, for rocks that maybe are slightly uncharted. This boat's very deep. It, it draws 7.3 7 meters, I think. So it's very deep. So we have to be extra cautious. Can it be nerve wracking? Yes, of course. The threat of rocks ever present on this fantastic coastline, many owners have cherished yachts and trust them to a safe pair of hands. Within the Wally class, there's an array of past Olympians who are ably qualified to do exactly this. On board Tango G, highly experienced French Olympic gold medalist Thierry Pepinet is tasked with the role of tactician. His race instinct is to sail flat out in search of the win, but sometimes it takes the cool head of a navigator to rein that ambition in. It's a really uh, tough job to be a uh, uh, navigator here because it's a lot, lot of uh, responsibilities and every time the tactician try to put pressure on the navigator to go closer and closer to the, this uh, part because he knows that he can gain some meters, but at, at one moment you have to find the balance and and the navigator has to say, no, I don't want to go there. Fellow Olympian Anamika Bess is a navigator on board Talikana. Coming from the world of dinghies, she's sailing her first regatta here in Costa Smeralda. As well as the rocks, she's also having to deal with sailing a big boat with a deep draft. You can't uh, think about it the same as in a little, in an Yingling Elliot or a yeah, little dinghy where you can touch the ground and oh, no, put your center board up and, and turn around. No, 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 this is, this is serious stuff, serious speed, so you have to be really responsible. Mastering these waters is one of the greatest challenges in the world of Grand Prix yacht racing. But when you get it right, the rewards are like no other. sailing in a venue like this with conditions like today it's the dream sail you know it's the right place to be for all of these boats and I don't think any of us would rather be any place on earth this week.